everybody, it's Sharon here. Welcome back to my channel for those who are returning and welcome to any new subscribers that may be visiting for the first time. So the other night when I was at home, hubby was in bed, I got to thinking about what I'd like to do next and decided I'd like to. I actually purchased just recently some CD covers. This one has no acetate in it. I tried tea dyeing them and they've come out not too bad. I did want them a little bit darker though for what I wanted to do and I thought I could use these but knowing that I was turning the camera on and I've been watching people use CD covers for quite some time now thinking to myself I wish I had some CD covers I'd really love to have a play and it got me thinking about everybody out there who doesn't have them available and the Wonderland journal that I'm working on, as you know, fairies and unicorns seem to be a bit of a thing. And fairies are little. So, and I was thinking back to the tiny embellishments that Tracy Fox does. And I went, how can I make CD covers that are little using what I already have? So, I've made a prototype. And as you can see, it is quite a bit smaller than the CD cover that I purchased, but it's still really sweet. So I'm going to make some for my journal and then we're going to have a play with some mixed media on top. So now that I've turned the camera on, I have to remember how I did that. So let me see. So to prep for this video, all I have done is I've taken, so this is my prototype and this will stay in my ideas book. So I have to make six for this journal. I've taken some book paper and I've glued it using a glue stick to some tea stain paper. And I didn't realise it had come out quite that wrinkly. This tea stain paper was quite wrinkly. Um... So I'm hoping this will work okay. Anyway, we'll give it a go and see if it comes out okay. So I'm just going to cut these in half using my paper cutter. And then I'm going to try and remember my measurements. I'm going to have to check because it was a bit of a trial and error. So I think I actually scored my sheet first, so I might do it that way. Just getting out my scoreboard. And because I can't remember, just checking your in camera, because I can't remember, I'm going to use my prototype to check where my score lines were. So I think this was a half inch. So a half inch and then I wonder if I turned it around. I know I've had to trim a little bit off here. So say three and five sixteenths. Oh, sorry, three and five eighths. What am I saying? Okay, so I turned that around because my paper isn't level on that side. So a half inch and three and five eighths. And then, oh, that didn't work because I didn't turn it around. Mm -hmm. Did that well, didn't I? That doesn't work anyway. What was I looking at? Okay, we'll try a different one. So this end is even. So a half inch. I 
and that's our flap. And then I'm going to say four and a quarter. And then I believe it's a half inch on this side as well for... It's not quite, so three eighths of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to score it four and a half. So that gives me my width. And then I'm going to score those at a half, half an inch. So a half inch on this side. And then coming in a half inch from that score line so scoring at four okay and I think that's all I need to do oh yes I think that's all I need to do there okay and then taking my scissors and I've left my scissors somewhere else just excuse me sorry about that I was doing some fussy cutting last night and I've left them with the fussy cutting Okay, so we can cut this piece here off. So I'm just using the score line as my guide. And I found if I turned it over and cut on the left hand side of that score line. actually give you the measurements for the little CD cover. I don't think I've actually measured it to be fair. Let's have a look so that you have an idea. So it works out at roughly three and three quarters. It's not quite three and three quarters by three and a half inches. So, and I should give you millimetres, so it's roughly 9 millimetres, uh, sorry, 90, yes, what am I saying? 90 millimetres by almost 95. So that's the measurement of the CD cover that we're working on. Okay, and then at the top here, we're going to cut at an angle to that corner that we've created on both sides and then cutting straight across the score line to that corner or oh, sorry that yes that corner so that the cross okay and that gives us our oh and I've done this the wrong way oh no I haven't no, it's all good. It's all good. And then coming at an angle on this side. It's always so much easier when the camera's not turned on. I seem to go into panic mode once I hit that record button. And taking these off. So just cutting straight down the side. And I promise you'll only have to, well, assuming you do what I do, you'll only have to do this once. Because once we've gone through this process together, we can then use the one that we've created as a guide to do our others. Which is why I've kept a template that I can use for future reference. Okay, actually, if I turn that over. OK, 
Okay, so that's formed the top of our CD cover. And then all that's left to do is I'm just going to tidy up the edge here. I have a little bit of overhang on my book paper. And just tabbing these edges. Okay, and so folding these over. And I do need my bone folder. Remove my rubbish out of your viewing. And folding this side over. When I've prepped these papers, I have some that have plain book paper. On the inside and then some that had printed text on the inside so totally up to you you could put music paper or whatever you like and then folding that up and scoring that and as you see I do have a slight overhang so I'm just going to take a pencil and I can't remember how far down I came with this one. I think it was about a quarter of an inch. It may not even be that far. Oops. It is about a quarter of an inch. Sorry, an eighth of an inch I've come. So we can measure that just so that you get an idea. So one eighth there and one eighth there and I'll just draw a line and we're just going to trim this off. Which means I will have to re-tab the sides here. that's okay this was part of the reason I decided to keep one as a template was because I knew it got a little bit tricky okay and so just re-tabbing or re-angling the tucks there Oops. <laughs> I don't want to be I can't pick it up guys Okay, and so, seem to be a magnet for paper at the moment. They're sticking to me. I've gone a little bit wonky there. That didn't quite work out how I planned. Maybe I need to come down a quarter of an inch from there. Okay, so as you can see, sometimes it doesn't go right, and that's fine. So how am I best to do this I want to come so I'm lining up my four with my crease mark and I'm going to lift my paper up and I'm going to come a quarter of an inch from there and then I'm going to do the same line up my four actually I'll have to do it this way because I want the inches Running up my four, sorry, an eighth of an inch. Let me get that right. Actually, what I might do is I might just cut it off with a half knife. I have here my big Stanley knife, so I'm just going to use that because it's there and it's handy. Okay, you could totally have drawn a line and use scissors, but I'm not the straightest cut in the world, so that just seemed like a quick and easy option. Okay, and that's much better. So when you fold this over,
there is a little bit of a, a lip at the top, which is what I wanted. And you may have to tweak. So I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, and then from there I had to figure out how to get a hole in the middle. So you could use your Sizzix die cut if you have a circular... Oh gosh, my hands. I'm so sorry. I just realised how bad my hands are at the moment. My, um, my skin is reacting to the water again and I, I don't know why. There's nothing I can do to help it except continue sorry continue to put moisturizer on but that explains why they're they're sore anyway um i had to figure out how to put my hole so you could use your sizzix big shot if you have a die that is the right size and put it through your big shot for me i used my hole punch so all i did was folded this in half and turned it upside down and just roughly so I'm lining up so it's roughly halfway along this edge or oh, sorry so this edge is roughly at halfway across the circle and I'm just eyeballing to see if it's centered on either side I think it's a bit too high and I'm going to cut that out so probably not the most perfect circle I think I was a little bit high on that one but this one here worked out I think a better shape so I've decided to keep this as a template so when I do my next ones I can fold it in half and use that as a guide i'm just checking i'm actually not that far out just a fraction just a fraction higher so now that we have this one and i will use my original because i have cut that circle a little bit skew with um we can then use that to draw our template onto our other sheets and use that as a guide to cut it out so I will do that and I will turn the camera back on I'll do one on camera so that you can see and in actual fact I might do it this way simply because this is the orientation of our paper and I may even paper clip this to the top my extra set of hands when I need them oh this is the one that I scored that the scoring was out so that doesn't work I'll pop that one aside for now and I need to trim this edge And I am going to mark out my circle because I'm really happy with whoops <laughs> happy with the way the circle is punched out on this one I'm going to mark the circle and that way I can use that as a guide when I go to punch it out okay and so I'm thinking 
I might just use my Stanley knife because that's what I have here. I think my my little craft knife is where my scissors were from fussy cutting last night, I think. If they are, never mind. Nothing like using the ruler as a guide and then not using the ruler as a guide. Oh my goodness, it's not my day. Just going to turn it over I thought I could do it the other way but I really can't oh my goodness how embarrassing okay so just snipping off and tabbing and then I'm going to get my scoreboard So this is how I would do it now that I have a template. And I'm just lining up. My score line. Probably should have scored the other way because valleys become mountains and mountains become valleys, but I didn't. I did it the wrong way. Okay, I'm scoring this side. didn't learn from my mistake did you see that I totally did it the wrong way let's try this one out this one's already scored how funny let's try And because I've drawn on the inside, I need to fold it in the opposite direction to do my hole. And I'm just going to use that now as a guide and you'll be able to see roughly where I punched the original one. I'd say about there. Not perfect, but you know, it works.
Okay. And I'm not particularly worried about the crease line across the front because we are doing a little mixed media on the outside of it. So we should be able to cover that up. And to be fair, because my paper has wrinkled, it kind of blends <laughs> with the wrinkling. So I think that looks really pretty. You can see the text at the back. I'm going to cut out our others. I'll see if I can use the sheet that I did bodgy up the score lines with and hopefully that won't be too big a problem and I will turn the camera back on when I'm ready to start playing with them. See you shortly everybody. Bye.